We're going to start with the city um, showcases. So first, I would like to introduce uh, Ellen Mitchell, Advisor Investment Attraction at Toronto Global, to talk a little bit about Toronto and uh, the GTA. So Ellen, please. Thanks, Carolina. Um, thanks to Ambassador May, uh, the, uh, the BCCC, Apex Brazil, uh, and of course, Global Affairs Canada for organizing this and for your continued uh, partnership and support uh, with Toronto Global. It's been really great. Um, so I'm just going to get my presentation up here and I'll share my screen. Okay, so I'll just quickly introduce myself. Uh, my name is Ellen Mitchell and I um, oversee the Brazilian market for Toronto Global. We are a government funded uh, agency that essentially supports foreign companies looking to enter the Canadian market. Uh, we work really closely with all levels of government, including the Trade Commissioner Service in Brazil, uh, the BCCC, uh, Startup Brazil and Apex Brazil, uh, lots of community partners, universities, colleges um, here in Toronto as well. So as you'll see in a moment, uh, we represent quite a, quite a diverse and large region um, and, and um, all the services that we provide, some of them on your screen now, are all completely confidential and they're all free, which is great. So you can see here that the Toronto region is really perfectly situated. It's located just in the southern portion of the province of Ontario, really close to the US border. And it, we sit in the Eastern Standard Time Zone of North America, which is super convenient for Brazilian companies, just, just an hour time difference. Um, so being located in the Toronto region, companies have access to a North American market of over 480 million consumers, uh, and then add on the Canada-European trade agreement, and that provides access to another 500 million consumers. So lots of, lots of really great access here in the Toronto region. So taking a little bit of a closer look now uh, at what our region is made, made up of, um, almost 7 million people here. Uh, we are the fourth largest metro in North America a labor force of three and a half million people. And as you'll see throughout the presentation, it's a really diverse, uh, diverse region. Um, that the multi-sector strength um, that we have here really drives and, drives and, and grows uh, innovation. So we have two airports here in Toronto. We have our international airport, uh, which is the second largest international airport. And it's a global hub that uh, serves over 40 million passengers a year. Uh, and it offers direct flights to not only Brazil, but other um, top business markets as well, like India, China, uh, and the Middle East. Um, and then we also have um, a downtown airport, which is just 10 minutes from our financial center. And it offers direct flights to New York, Boston, Washington, Chicago, and another of a number of other major business centers across Canada and across North America. So it's kind of the ideal transportation network for any sort of business. So Toronto is really Canada's economic engine, and you'll, you'll see that throughout the presentation, but we have over 800,000 businesses located here. 40% uh, of Canada's um, uh, global business headquarters, 20% of Canada's GDP, and we are a $317 billion economy. So not only are we large, we're, we're very diverse. Uh, we consistently outperform other cities with one of the most diverse economies in North America, supporting a variety of key business sectors, from food processing and financial services to technology and energy, from fashion and film and tourism to life sciences, the region's multi-sector strength really drives growth and innovation, helping to keep the economy resilient to economic downturns. So during this presentation, I'm going to focus mostly on tech and AI just because of the audience that we have here, but um, please feel free to reach out if there are other sectors that you would be interested in um, speaking a little bit more about, uh, health tech, for example, or any, any other that you see here. So the Toronto region is really Canada's largest tech hub and the third largest in North America. We have world-renowned universities, researchers, innovation hubs, all of which want to work with industry, which is so fantastic. They're willing to collaborate on common problems that companies are facing. Um, and some of these, uh, just to name a few, um, Uber, Google, Samsung, Microsoft, Etsy, they're all working on innovation here in the Toronto region and they're all partnering uh, with the universities that we have. So I'll talk a little bit about artificial intelligence just because it is, uh, it's sort of prevalent these days and it's in, in everything that we do. Um, so few places in the world really offer such limitless opportunities 
to apply AI across multiple industries in, commercial, in a commercial setting. We are home to a global financial services center, a world leading medical and health systems research hub, and have among the largest tech manufacturing and professional services and creative industries in North America. Hardly a month goes by without a major multinational company announcing that they are setting up an AI lab in the Toronto region. But it's not just foreign companies that are thriving here. The Toronto region boasts a, boasts a deep and connected network of incubators and accelerators that have become a magnet for entrepreneurs and venture, venture capital investment, giving us one of the largest concentrations of AI startups in the world. So just a couple of fast facts that I like to mention. Uh, in Canada as a whole, we have over 650 active AI firms. Almost, two, almost 300 of those are located in the Toronto region. Canada ranks fourth uh, on the Global AI Index for 2019, and we are second only to the US in the number of higher education institutes offering AI-related majors. Um, you, the University of Toronto, which is located downtown here in Toronto, has supported 81 AI startups since 2010, with over half of those being created since 2015. So it's really growing here. And in the last two years, um, the Toronto region has welcomed HSBC, Samsung, Uber, NVIDIA, Etsy, LG, Weight Watchers, just to name a few. And they're all, they're all doing um, AI research here. And it's because of the talent that exists here and because of the partnership opportunities that are available. So I'll talk a little bit about the University of Toronto, just because it is, um, it is kind of a, a cornerstone of um, AI here in, in Canada. Um, but it produces alumni that go on to work with some of the largest and most innovative tech corporations in the world, like Google, Google Brain, Microsoft, Apple, Facebook, Facebook, et cetera, all in those engineering and research positions. And U of T is happy to work with any company. Um, so it's, it's really fantastic that, that um, research is coming out of there. So I think it's important that we talk a lot about um, startups today and um, that, the innovation hub that we have here, um, because U of T and, and the institutions that we have here are not just looking to work with large corporations. They want to work with, with startups as well that are looking at doing R&D. Um, so our, the Toronto region's diverse talent, cutting edge technology and dynamic support system provide the environment that both global companies and startups need to innovate and grow. We have over 2000 tech startups spread across the Toronto region, uh, making it a magnet for entrepreneurs in the AI space. So these are just a few of the innovation hubs that we have throughout the Toronto region. So I'm gonna switch gears a little bit now and talk more about FinTech uh, and financial services. Um, Toronto is home to all five major banks, uh, Canadian banks, along with 41 foreign bank head offices. So simply put, uh, we are the financial capital of Canada. More than half mm -hmm. of Fortune 500 companies in financial services have a presence in the Toronto region, including JP Morgan Chase, Wells Fargo, Citigroup, Morgan Stanley, Goldman Sachs, etc. And over 80% of foreign banks operating in Canada have their headquarters located here. So Visa, MasterCard, PayPal. As I mentioned, all of the major players in banking are located here, but we also have some really innovative locally grown fintechs as well. Uh, well Simple, Fresh, Fresh Books, Borrow Well. Um, and in 2019, HSBC um, opened an innovation lab uh, here in the Toronto region as well, which is So the Toronto region is really emerging as one of the world's most vibrant fintech hubs, thanks to extensive tech talent and competitive business climate. Home to 50% of Canada's 60,000 fintech workers, the Toronto region is the nation's leader in financial services innovation and a top destination for fintech investment. There are over 140 fintech startups located in the region and a host of incubators contributing to a sustained pipeline of entrepreneurial talent. Financial institutions in the Toronto region are actively partnering with other market participants to better connect with the latest technology advances. So for example, we've got Bank of Montreal and the Ryerson DMZ. Uh, they have um, a FinTech Accelerator program. We also have CIBC partnering with, uh, with Mars, Mars Digital Discovery. Um, RBC partners with the Creative Destruction Lab, which is out of University of Toronto. 
And in 2016, Scotiabank actually created something called the Digital Factory, which is their own in-house fintech incubator. Uh, and it houses teams that are focused on designing and delivering digital solutions for Scotiabank specifically. So financial, as I mentioned, financial institutions in Canada are also partnering with smaller fintech companies that are doing super innovative things. So I mentioned Borrow Well and Well Simple before. We also have League Insurance, and they're all working with those larger financial institutions to implement uh, their more niche products and services. So it's a great opportunity to partner with, with a larger financial institution. So among all of the things that I've, that I've already mentioned, uh, the Toronto region and Canada and Ontario as a whole have a lot to offer uh, international companies. We have low operating costs, especially when you compare it to the United States. Uh, salaries here are often 50% lower than, than what you'd find in the US. Uh, access to talent again is another thing that, that we absolutely have here over, over the United States specifically. We have very generous tax incentives. Um, and I believe tomorrow, uh, the session tomorrow is gonna go into a lot more of, of this kind of thing. So we'll just touch on it. But, specific to the company, to the work that your company is doing, um, but many of them are around R&D, these incentives, and working with post-secondary institutions, uh, researchers, students, um, master's level and PhD students as well. Uh, as Elise mentioned, we have a very competitive tax rate here, uh, and we also have universal health care, which really means that employers save on health care plans for, for their employees. We are one of the most educated uh, countries in the OECD. So as a new business in the area, you're gonna demand the skills and education, uh, educated labor force that will make your time and efforts worthwhile. The Toronto region is home to an unparalleled talent pool with the skills, knowledge, and experience that you need to enhance your bottom line. So according to the OECD, Canada is home to one of the most educated populations in the world. And 67% of Ontarians have uh, completed a post-secondary education which is more than any other country in the OECD. So we also offer incredible industry academic partnerships. Throughout the Toronto region, there are 11 uh, universities and colleges that, that are looking to work with industry. But in reality, there are 18 because uh, across Ontario, um, because students come from all over Ontario um, for, for a co-op term or if they're fresh out of graduation, much of the time they end up moving to Toronto to complete, complete their co-op term or uh, when they're looking for work at the, end of, at the end of their studies. And universities and colleges love working with industry on research projects, quite often because it gives the students a chance to engage in real, real work experience before graduating, um, masters and PhD level students as well. Companies, both large and small, have research partnerships in Toronto, all because they recognize that students and professors are probably working on or have an interest in working on some of some of the similar uh, projects that they are. So something that I love doing at Toronto Global is connecting industry with universities, um, ensuring that you're connected to the right professors, researchers, and students, um, and just making sure that the project is going to work out for everyone. Uh, so we talk a lot about University of Toronto um, because it is consistently ranked at the top in terms of its researchers. It draws on students from around the world, so you can bet that the research and innovation coming out of U of T is something quite unique. So I talked about our diversity, um, and that's something that is really critical for a company's ability to innovate and adapt in a fast-changing environment. So consistently ranked one of, if not the, most multicultural region in the world, um, the Toronto region really gives companies access to a labour pool that is multicultural and multilingual, that can help you effectively engage in international markets. So with di this dynamic of cultures intersecting comes the capacity for innovation, creativity, and collaboration, really making the Toronto region one of the most progressive and innovative places in the world. Uh, the Toronto region is home to 35% of all foreign-born people in Canada. We welcome 100,000 new immigrants every year, accounting for a third of Canada's total immigration inflow, and we are 51% foreign-born. So we are we are super diverse. So I like to show this map. Um, it, it shows the, po the Portuguese speaking population in the Toronto region and you can see that there is no shortage. Um, so if that's important to your company uh, when coming into Canada, you can bet that you'll be able to find uh, a Portuguese speaking person to, to uh, help get your business off the ground. 
So again, I'm not going to talk too much about this because I, I know that you'll you'll um, be hearing from some law firms probably tomorrow. Um, but incorporating a company in Canada is a super quick and easy process. Uh, Toronto Global works with a number of different law firms um, that can get this done for you in a, in a matter of hours, which is which is really cool. So. Um, given the diversity of the Toronto region's economy, the federal government recognizes the need for a mobile, a mobile labor force that is business friendly and available to all industry sectors. So Canadian requirements allow for all corporations setting up in Canada to transfer their senior personnel with really little, little red tape. Um, there are also a number of other immigration programs available um, for companies as well, uh, from a startup's perspective or from a global talent perspective. So I hope that you can kind of get a bit of an idea of the Toronto region, but it really is one of the most dynamic places in the world to both live and work. Uh, the, the, the region provides endless opportunities for growth, a thriving market for business, and a superior standard of living that is really second to none. So I hope at some point you're able to come and experience it for yourself, um, maybe next year at some point, but uh, it's, really, it's just a, a great place to live and work. So, I'll, I'll, um, I'm sure this will be shared with everyone, but my contact information is on there and I'm happy to, to speak with anyone um, on a one-on-one -on -one basis, but we can, I guess we can turn it for questions now. Thank you, Ellen. Um, thank you for the presentation. Um, so I will, we have a cash question here in the Q&A and in, uh, in respect uh, to Toronto, is there any indicator or trend the quantity of growth of AI talent. So what's the, the trend in terms of creating new talents in AI? Mm -hmm. um, so I know that the government um, did put out a mandate a couple of years ago to increase STEM talent. So uh, universities are producing more, uh, more STEM talent than ever before. Um, so there is no shortage of, of AI talent in the Toronto region. Um, and as I said before, students really come from across Ontario and across Canada to work in the Toronto region. So um, you'll be able to grab talent from, uh, from any province or um, any part of Ontario. Um, in here. Perfect. Um, so uh, about cost of living in the GTA, how does it compare in terms of other provinces and other countries? Good question. Uh, so cost of living, as I mentioned, our, our region is pretty diverse. So depending on where, where in the region you want to live, uh, it'll, it'll vary a little bit. Um, but compared to Vancouver and Montreal, for example, it's pretty similar. Um, compared to other countries, it would depend on, depend on the country. Um, I think it's, uh, it's also a comparison between big cities and smaller cities like everywhere else, right? Yeah. So if you compare exactly. Sao Paulo to Toronto, I think it's not that different or if you go downtown Toronto versus like going to Scarborough or going yeah. to uh, Osho and Durham region. So it's kind of depending on where you want to um, really live. Yeah. Um, so, but, um, so for this specific, if you want to um, uh, learn more about cost of living, we can also have a conversation after on, um, on some tools that can help you have a better idea of how much it will cost for you to find um, a home or to find um, schools for kids and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, for sure, that's something that we we do have. Our research team at Toronto Global does have some really great tools uh, that can help compare very specific cities. So, uh, if there is even across the Toronto region, we can we can help price out housing and, and that kind of thing throughout, throughout the region. Perfect. Um, I don't know. Uh, I don't see any other questions right now so is there um well if there's uh any other oh here another one how hard would it be to incorporate a startup in toronto that's an easy one a startup it's pretty easy to incorporate a company um you don't have to um do a whole lot uh if it i guess it depends on some companies go through an incubator or accelerator uh which is called um a startup visa program uh, so oftentimes it's it's really easy to go to say uh, the DMZ, which is out of Ryerson University. Um, they will help you really sort of with your market entry strategy into Canada, um, help connect you into the universities there. Um, and attached to that is a visa. Um, they'll also help you get incorporated. So it's super, super easy. 
it to get to get incorporated. Um, and that's sort of across the board. It doesn't matter if you're a startup or a Fortune 500 company. It's it's all the same, um, and it's it's super easy. Yeah. Um, well, I would like to thank you, Ellen, for your time. Uh, if you guys have any questions, we will share this presentation afterwards uh, with Ellen Context as well. So if you have any further questions, please feel free to connect with her um, after this. We got just one more question here. So we're a small tech and design consultancy, been working with the most larger companies in the market like Google, Ambev, Petrobras, and banks, fintechs, etc. Uh, we're essentially a small company, you no know, more than two or three projects simultaneously. Um, so, because we're small and extremely, we need a lot of help to make conversion successful. It's just a comment. So, yeah, sorry about that. Uh, I thought it was a question. It's more like a comment. But, um, yes, we can definitely help. Canada is very easy to do business with, uh, even if you're a small company. There's a lot of support. Uh, from associations and governments that can definitely help you. So um, we can uh, go through that. Thank you, Alan, for everything.